What's up party people, G5 Productions in the place to be and today I'm going to do a DIY. So let's get into it. We're gonna work on my stage box. That's it. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Gerald here, excited to share with you all once again. I like to build racks, cases, packs of cables, build harnesses, or in other words, doing anything that I can to shave off seconds or even minutes off of my setup and more importantly, the recovery. So I use a lot of things out of convenience uh, that I feel that enhances me doing that. And in particular today, we're gonna be working on my stage box. Now what I'm going to do is probably gonna save me all of probably three to five seconds. And I'm gonna show you why here in a moment. But in the meantime, if you don't mind, go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna keep up with all these cool videos, all you gotta do is rock that bell. Let's get into our DIY on the stage box. Ah, and there it is. So there's nothing I need to do to the front of this, but I just basically wanted to show it to you because I have a uh, power conditioner mounted right on top of the Behringer S16 uh, stage box here. Got all these inputs, like 16 inputs and then eight outputs. And uh, what I typically do is set this in the stage somewhere and all of the band members plug into it accordingly and then I'm able to uh, run out of it to monitors or even the main speakers depending on if I want to come directly out of here versus the mixer. So we're not doing anything up front here per se. I just wanted to let you know uh, what I'm actually working with. So let's get this buttoned up, flip it over to the back. Right here in the back is quite simple. We have the attached cable here to the power conditioner. I normally just roll it in there like so when I'm done and then I'll pull it out to plug it in. The IEC part of it is in the stage box. It's already turned on, but I can't leave it in here because it's too tall for the back cover to fit on without really and seriously kinking this cable. So what I usually do after the events is just take it off and let it hang right there. I don't want this dangling around and you know putting little scratches you know in the back of here eventually, right? And also to save that couple of seconds it takes to do this. Um, I just decided to go ahead and get this 90 degree angle. So about this long is the original Behringer cable, but just to give you a perspective right there, it's about that long. So the rest of it is rolled up and uh, literally uh, zip tied uh, to the rack rail right there. So I got just enough out to keep things neat and tidy and uh, able to simply troubleshoot. So I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna make this newer cable uh, much shorter. I got this cable from a lighting install versus throwing it away. I just figured it was cool to just repurpose it. So that's what I'm gonna do here. Let's go ahead and size it up. Now, in case you guys are wondering what this is, it is simply an EtherCon cable. So I have this in on both sides of it. And uh, this is what I run uh, from the stage box to the mixer. So when I plug instruments in it, it's converted uh, all the analog inputs to digital, sends it through the Cat5 to my Behringer X32 Compact, and then it reconverts that signal uh, to analog, blah, blah, blah. All right, I repositioned everything so we can get a little bit more light here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, break the zip tie on this cable. There we go. So here's the original cable. You can see how long that is, right? Uh, just like the other one. So I'm gonna repurpose this one. It has no brakes or nothing like that in it. So I'm pretty sure I could have it on standby for whatever. Now here's the uh, new cable. So the first thing I wanted to do was uh, just kind of think about my run and my layout. So again, the goal here and the object here is to get this to be able to plug into here, but with the 90 degree plug. So with that being said, let's go ahead and put it where I'm actually going to plug it right here. So it's kind of uh, looped around and uh, not so much in the way of anything important here. And uh, I'm gonna get enough cable to uh, just kind of run it like this, right? So again, the goal is to have stuff out of the way, right? So I'm gonna re-zip tie this back and get just enough of this cable to go uh, right in here. All right, first things first is, uh, so you all have an idea where the actual brake is, right? It's right there. Anyway, let's get our cut on. Now since we already had a split in the black part right here, I'm just going to take advantage of it and expose uh, some of these wires and uh, peel the main sleeve off. I'm just pulling it apart and then I'm going to cut around here nice and even without cutting into these wires here. To determine how much of this I need to strip off, I'm going to go ahead and take this apart 
and expose where I need to connect it to inside. I don't know the wiring schematic just yet, so I'm gonna do my own little thing to figure it out. But basically we have a green screw, over here we have a silver screw, and then on the other side we have a gold screw. So how do we know which wire to put where? Okay, so here's our multimeter. We went ahead and uh, set this up to uh, continuity right there. So basically that just means when these two leads touch, it's gonna make a sound. Which wire is hooked up to uh, which lead? So. Uh, to make life easy, I'm gonna unscrew uh, one of these right here. There we go, just to get that a little bit longer. So I'm gonna jam this in uh, one pin and we're gonna figure out which wire is connected to this pin. So here we go. So it's not the green one. The black one is connected to this pin and not the white one. And then we're gonna check to see which one is hooked it to this pin over here, like so. Right, sometimes this is what you gotta do when you're working without clamps and stuff, so. Not the green one, so it's the white one, and not the black one. So white goes here, and obviously the green one is gonna be hooked to the ground pin, but for inquiring minds, let's go ahead and uh, hook that up like that. So I'm touching this lead, not the white one, not the black one, but the green one. So the next thing we need to do is go ahead and get this stripped out so we can match the wires to this. So it's gonna be black, green, white. Let's strip this down and hook it up. I really only want just enough so I don't wanna you know, have too much wire exposed on top of this plastic here. So I'm gonna just go like uh, maybe a quarter inch. So somewhere about halfway in the, into here. Yep, about a quarter inch. So we got our wires all stripped out right here. So the next thing I need to do is uh, with the top cover here, is just simply open this up to feed the wire through. So as I tighten these two screws down, it really just kind of locks this wire in place so it won't come undone. Before I tighten this part here down in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and hook it up to there. Black wire is going over here, the green wire is going there, and the white wire is going there. But I'm just gonna go ahead and hook the green wire up first. So here we go. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and hook up the black wire here. All right, so we have everything all hooked up. We're doing the uh, snug test here right now, so I feel pretty good about that, and uh, everything's nice and tight accordingly pulling on each wire individually to make sure nothing comes out of place. And then of course, I'm gonna do a, a quick continuity test. All right, so here we go back in, and I'll lock the black one in there, and I'll see which one of these it is. There we go, good to go. We'll go ahead and do the uh, white side over here. Good to go, and then of course, the green one's gonna obviously be in the middle. Okay, quick note, obviously the screw right here is gonna go right smack there in the middle of this piece right here. So what I have to do is strip some more of this uh, black cable off of all three right here, just so I can uh, maneuver this a little bit better to get these three cables out of the way. So I am literally peeling this away with my fingernail so that I can, uh, again, maneuver everything out of the way. Now there'll be plenty of room inside the housing to uh, guide these cables around accordingly. So that's what I'm doing here, just kind of uh, making sure there are no 90 degree bends on this cable because I really want this to work, right? So any cable that must be kinked, like in the case of the green one, I want it to be a nice round loop. Of course I could uh, just go ahead and strip that off and make it shorter, uh, but I'm not going to. I'm just gonna simply allow it to loop around like so. And that clears the middle so we can put that screw of this housing right down in it. So here we go. All right, so here we go home stretch. When I tighten this part down, I wanna make sure it's absolutely in the middle, naturally uh, resting in that groove right there. A little tightening that way. And I'm gonna do this kind of in a uh, systematic way, like, you know, tighten each side down a little bit at a time. All right, so just to check one more time uh, on all of the connections here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right there and check. There we go, and nothing else. I'm gonna put this right here. 
and nothing else and right there and nothing else good to go so here's the end result all right down to the wire so i'm going to go ahead and plug this in right here and plug it into the back of the stage box just like that so my goal is now that i have a shorter cable a little bit more streamlined and also definitely gain uh, some more access to be able to plug right into my ethercon connections a little bit more easier um, i'm going to go ahead and get this down under here because i do want to zip tie this back to the rack rail but again, taking advantage of the shorter cable run and a little bit more free space over this way, right? So what I wanted to do was um, ensure that when I do zip tie down that this connector here is straight down in there with absolutely no stress left to right or up and down. And so I think the best way to accomplish that is to put one zip tie right about here. And then because I do want um, this here tucked down and out of the way, I'm gonna just kind of uh, manipulate the cable accordingly. So let's uh, try some options out and see what works best. All right, so the one thing I like about this is the fact that I got this cable secure. It's running in a manner that there's really no stress uh, to this part of the cable and also right here. And I have plenty of room to access to these uh, Ethercon connectors because that's pretty much the things I'll be hooking up to the stage box here. So let's go ahead and get the uh, main cable back down in here and put it all back in the storage position accordingly. All right, so here's my Ethercon and I do roll this at a specific length on purpose, Velcroing both ends of it. So when I squeeze this in the middle, it's designed by me to pretty much fit right down in the middle of there. So, and it doesn't matter either which way I put it in there, but I just kind of like, since these are there, I'll put them on this end. So these leads don't, you know, scratch up anything down there I need to connect into. And so there's that, right? And again, you can see I have access to everything, clean, easy troubleshooting or whatever the case is. All right, heads up. So I decided at the last minute to uh, just kind of reroute this underneath there and push that extra cable down in there and loop it. So it gives it an even cleaner appearance. And also um, this is not too much stress or anything right there. Definitely it's not disturbing the uh, connection into the stage box. So I like that look plus um, it just allows me a more streamlined cable run uh, with wrapping up the excess cable for the power conditioner. So to give you a reference point of how far does that plug stick up outside of the box with the lid off, well, approximately a half an inch. And even if I were to move it down to uh, just a little bit more right there, still looking at just at about a half an inch or just above it. So now looking at how far that is, you can see obviously how much space we have in the lid to go comparison to how far this sticks up. So no worries, no problems with the lid crushing down on that or hitting it or anything. And just to give you a visual of how far that is right there. You know, it really would be a problem to get all the way to a gig just to find out that plug idea is not working. So we're gonna test it out. It's plugged into the wall there. I'm gonna turn on the power strip and make sure everything comes on. So there we go. Power strips working, obviously the most effective thing would have been done is the stage box, but it did come on. Everything seems to be just like I last set it. And uh, check this out, just, it's just a little bonus for you guys. If you're interested in this power strip right here, or conditioner, it's pretty cool. Got lights for your whole racks, this cool dimmer. It's a little bonus, you know. All right, party people, so we got the DIY all finished up. Let me know what you think about this in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And if you want to keep up with any videos, all you got to do is rock that bell. I'm Gerald, and if you want to know more about what we do, visit www.gfireproductions.com. Let's party.